to go see the competition. It's a good place to start. So if I want to go work for a shoe store, I'm going to go look up other shoe stores. You're going to see who's doing it now, what's standard practice. Does it make sense to research the competition? The other thing I like to ask my clients is go find your three favorite sites of a similar but not identical type. What are your three favorite sites? And tell me why. And it's not that I'm going to go and copy those sites, but it's going to tell me, do I like bright bold graphics? Do I like some things that are sedub and um, pastel? It's going to tell me a lot about what they're looking for if I can see what they like. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so you interview this person, you do some research, you ask them to show you some sites. It's sort of learning. Planning is part there too. You, you do researching, and they say sketching and mock-ups. I do two stages of mock-ups. The first one I do is a wireframe. And a wireframe is a black and white, I, I, you can use blue underline links uh, to show links, but it's black and white and it's to show where things are going to go on the page. And it has almost no real content outside of the navigation. And a wireframe is like a blueprint. You guys all conceptually know that if you were going to build a house, the first step would be to draw up plans, right? Mm -hmm. And those plans should tell you, initially, the very first steps, how big the house is going to be, where the closets are, where the doors are, where the windows are. Those are the sort of things in a blueprint, right? In your initial blueprint, does it tell you what color you're going to paint the walls? No, and it doesn't matter at that point. So our first step in, pl in planning is going to be a wireframe, where we just mock up, and we usually just use lines for text and an X in a box for images, and we just mock up what the page is going to look like. So we can get agreement from the customer. This is how the page is going to be laid out. This is your primary level of navigation. And we're going to actually label the links for the navigation. Your logo is going to go here. We're not even going to put the logo in. We're just going to put a box for it. We might have the name of the site across the top. But predominantly, the only thing that's going to be real is the, the top level, name of the site, the H1 tag, and the navigation, just to show how the pages are going to link together. Because until you get that agreed upon, why move on to the next step? You, could, you should get paid something at the point that they approve that after each phase of work because you don't want to get to the end and have to find a lawyer to get, collect all your pay. Make sense? You should have a contract with them before you begin designing. Usually the interview, meeting with them, research, that's free. You will come up with a basic concept and say, okay, here's what it's going to cost. I'm going to come up with a wireframe placement layout and that's going to cost you this much. I'm going to come up with a digital comp where it's full color. You pretty much do it in Photoshop rapidly, build what the site's going to look like. And that's going to cost this much because at each level, they could take those plans and they could take them to somebody else to finish the site. So you want to get paid for what you've done so far because you've given them a deliverable that could be taken to somebody else that could bound down the block and say, well, I don't want to pay for all those fancy design skills. That, that friend, neighbor kid down the block, He's in high school and he's taking web design. I'm just going to have him build it for me now that you gave me this design. Okay, but make sure you get paid for your design. You really, if you go into business for yourself, want a lawyer to help you come up with a contract because I've got to tell you, trying to get, to get if you have your own business, <coughs> trying to get clients to pay, you aren't just, and here's, here's the thing, when, you, when you're charging somebody, say $35 an hour, you're charging them $35 an hour for the design time. But you're going to have a lot of unpaid time because you're going to have to build them, do accounting, market your own business, drive to and from, do sales calls, do the free first meeting. All that time is not billed. You guys with me on that? Make sure that you do get what you're, being, what you're billing for. You make sure you're billing accurately. You should take some classes on entrepreneurship and how to set things up. And I haven't done a lot of this myself, but my mom ran her own web design business for years. And sometimes you need a lawyer to go after them when they don't pay because they don't all pay. And so not only are you the graphic designer, sometimes you're the bill collector. Make it easier for yourself by planning well in advance. And that's something we don't always think of going into business for yourself. And that's why I teach, because I don't want to be in business for myself. So plan. Step one, we do the wireframe. Step two, then we do images, colors. We come up with a color scheme. We come up with a font scheme. And we get them to sign off, that they approve it. 
because you don't want to go into the next step until you've got a written signature. Yes, I approve you to go forward to the next step. That means you bill them and they pay for that amount. Okay? Design. And that's sort of where we're going. The design is sort of between the planning and that because you're actually doing your logo. And then we're going to decide somewhere in here where it says pick your tools, we're going to decide the best way to make the web page. Is there one best way to make a web page? No. How many different ways can you think of off the top of your head to make a web page? I can think of six or seven. What's the easiest way, do you think, to make a web page today? So I'm going to tell you a story. I have a son. His name's Matthew. A couple of you know him. Sandra knows him. They, went, they were in class together. Matt called me one day. I was shopping. I pick up the phone. He's like, Mom, I need to know how to make a website tomorrow. A website tomorrow, Matt? Yeah, I've got a friend who has a tattoo parlor. I don't have any money and I want a tattoo. I, he told me if I make him a web page, I could have a tattoo. And you need to make it tomorrow. He's like, yeah, I have to have it done by tomorrow. How hard is that going to be? I said, well, what does it need to have in it? He's like, basically the address, a map, and a bunch of photos of his existing, t of existing clients with tattoos. I said, is he willing to spend anything on hosting? He's like, yeah. I said, okay. I said, if I were you, and I had no knowledge, and I wanted a website by tomorrow, I would go to Wix, that's wix.com. I would look at what it would cost to get a domain name. And they have templates, and you can import pictures and put in captions, and they're all pre-done, and you can have a website done pretty quickly. He called me back the next day. He's like, well, I did two websites. I did the first one to learn how to use it. That took about two hours, and I had his whole website done in about another three. He's like, I'm getting my tattoo next week. It wasn't bad. I went and looked at it. Now, he's taking design classes from here. He had a good eye, but he never had to touch a line of code. He didn't have to pay anything with the software. He went to the website. He picked a template that he liked, and he started moving things around. Is that a good business website? It depends on your needs. It depends on your audience. It wasn't bad. I've seen a lot worse. Um, it was probably worth everything that the guy paid for it because the tattoo was probably worth three or four hundred bucks. And it was more than he was capable of doing himself, or so he thought. Matthew was probably better at it. He'd had a couple of design classes here. He's been a digital media student for a while. So you can make a website quickly. <coughs> That's probably not the best business solution for everybody, but it's often a good place for like a portfolio solution. That may be all anybody ever needs. How else might you make a web, pa make a web page? Coding yourself. You can hand code it, and you actually know how. How long will that take? It takes a long time, but it gives you a great deal of control. If you wanted to put something up on the web really rapidly, and you weren't worried about it being gorgeous, this there, just there and readable, long ago and far away, before we had Canvas or any learning management system, I started teaching my classes with a web enhanced component because you may or may not notice I am a little ADD and I lose everything. So I was doing really good. I was really well organized my first year as a teacher here and I would bring handouts and somebody would miss class. And the next week they'd say, hey, can I have that handout from last week? And I didn't have it on me. They'd have to follow me back to my office to get it and hopefully it was buried somewhere in my stacks of paper. Like, I know web design, why am I doing it this way? So, each week as I put together my notes, I would put it to a web page, and it didn't take a lot of time. I would make it, upload it, and then the, the student would come and say, hey, I missed class last week, can I get the notes? Absolutely, go to my web page. You, here's the address, it's in your syllabi. Download whatever you want. Students were happy, they could have all the notes back from the beginning of class because they lost things as frequently as I did. And I was happy because I didn't have to print anything anymore. Now, when I started this, I was using Word to save as a web page. Should you do that? No. It was fine in, 2000, it was fine in 1997. It's not fine now. In 1997, Office 97 was one of the best HTML editors around at the time. Really clean code. Today, I'm going to show you something in the next part of the lecture when we get into the tools. Not so much. Let's say you wanted to design the maryhelp.net site. And I actually have done that in this class where I've redesigned it like four times. I'm not redesigning it again because I'm to the point where, it's, where I'm happy with it. 
it's easy for me to maintain the amount of work to put things into it is almost non-existent. I really like it. Do you think I did that site in Dreamweaver? No. I'm using a content management system. I'm using Drupal, and I'll show you guys how that works. And I really think that the future of most robust company sites that are dynamic, database driven, is going to be content management systems. So why should you learn Dreamweaver? Because if you know Dreamweaver, you can actually use that with your content management systems to make the design a lot easier. Dreamweaver will also let you go one step harder than that. The people who really earn the good money in web development are people who can hand code. And so if you want to make good money in web development, and I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well make good money, right? What languages do you think you need to know? You know two. There you go, HTML and CSS, JavaScript, two more, PHP, and the other one isn't really a language, it's more, there's a language component. The other one is structured query language, you need to, have to run a, know how to run a back-end database. Because if you can hand code, if you can set up your own database and hand code it, you can actually create your own content management system and make it really specific to exactly what you need. And nobody has brought up WordPress. I think I talked about WordPress versus Drupal last time. Crystal Lake versus Rockford, did I do that lecture? Oh, I lose track. Okay, that'll be in the next one. We'll explain why I love Drupal and I'm not a fan of WordPress. All right, so you're going to code. And you can code either by hand coding or using Dreamweaver, in a, which is a what you see is what you get, known as WYSIWYG format. What do you think I do? You I, use your own code for website? Well, for, for maryhelp.net, again, I'm using Drupal, but I'm hand coding HTML in there. When I'm working with Dreamweaver, because some sites really are better with Dreamweaver, if I don't need that database back end, Dreamweaver is the way to go. I do 90% of my work in Dreamweaver, and then I tweak, because it's tedious to hand code. But the fact that I know how to hand code means that when something goes wrong, I, I go along and I design in Dreamweaver until something breaks. And the minute it breaks, I look at the code and I fix the code. Does that make sense? Knowing how to fix your code is incredibly powerful. Because the issue I found with Dreamweaver is sometimes when you delete things, the formatting doesn't delete with the text. If you can't read the code and understand why that's happening, you're, you're going to have an issue. So I want you guys, now some of you have taken web scripting with me already. It was a really good thing to take. I want you guys to be able to at least read and understand the code. We're going to spend part of today and next week in hand coding. Then we're going to do everything in Dreamweaver and go back and tweak. But you need to at least, I will frequently bring it up in the dual screen mode where you can see the design and the code. And I'll point out what the code is doing. Because hand coding is tedious, but being able to see where the code is wrong and delete and insert something is very effective. Plus. Why else might you need to hand code in Dreamweaver, which is 18 months old now, our version? We are in the process of changing from HTML4 to HTML5. There are things that are supported by browsers now that weren't supported when Dreamweaver was released. If you're in the creative cloud, it's keeping up. If you're in a boxed version, it stopped the moment it was published, unless you got updates. So there, are, there is code that I will go in and I will hand code that Dreamweaver doesn't know. But they'll leave it alone. So sometimes you want, need to bring in new features by hand coding. <coughs> so hopefully I've told you that while you may or may not want to learn hand coding, there is value in being able to. Yes? OK, good. All right, so that's coding. Now, I disagree with this. Though they say validate and test, I would make that its own step. Though in all honesty, it should be plan, test, design, test, code, test, launch, test. Test early, test often. The most, the, the best way I ever found on how this was important, I was working on my master's degree. And in Flash, I was creating a game that would be run in web browsers. Flash used to be a good tool for web design. Not anymore. It's pretty much dead for web design. And in Flash, I was trying to create a tool for teachers who could put in words and then hints, and then it would scramble and make a crossword a puzzle that your students can play. It was harder than it sounds. 
Um, and I thought I'd done this great job. But I have to tell you, when you are a programmer, you cannot edit your own work. It's like editing, it's like proofreading your own work, but you just can't, you can't do it. Don't ever assume you can find all the bugs in your own work because you know how it works. And you're going to, ma you're going to make it work the way you designed it, point blank. You don't even think that there might be another way until you watch somebody else use your design. There is nothing more enlightening than watching somebody else use your design. So I had this wonderful crossword puzzle and it was scrambling and it was working and I had one of my friends here test it. And they typed in their answer and they hit enter and nothing happened. I'm like, why didn't you push the button? She's like, I shouldn't have to take my hand off the keyboard. Why doesn't it work when I hit enter? I'll go code that. Nothing is more valuable than watching somebody else use your design. And you can ask people, you can just get, don't ask people, how do you like my design? They like you. Okay, guys? They like you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking them what you thought of their, they thought of your design. They're going to tend to be nice. What I want you to ask them at the design and plan stages, and we're going to ask each other. You guys are all going to get to know each other because you will, at some point by the end of the semester, you will all have looked at everybody else's website individually at least once. You need to ask them how they would do something. Here is my website. What, where would you go to find? And then you'll see if you've got it right. Does that make sense? Because the earlier you find an error, finding an error when you've just sketched out the site, that's so easy to catch, sketch something new. Finding an error after you've launched, that's expensive and time consuming. Find your errors as early as possible. Have your friends, your neighbor, your dog try your site. If your dog's as talented as mine and has a Facebook page. She actually can sort of use the touch screen with her nose, but she's really not a good tester. And once you launch, it's not over. It's really, that's version one. Version two will be along later. If you still have the same site today that you did in 2000, you're probably out of business. Any questions on the, and we're gonna go through all these steps multiple times in class. Any question on the steps and where you'd go through for creating a website? Okay.